Welcome back to Geeks and Grounds, a monthly game club and weekly podcast. This week, twice weekly, (laughs) bi-weekly. We are a club where we play games and brew good conversation together. My name is Jenny Windham. And I'm Joel Thomas. And we're here with a special catch-up episode, I suppose you could call it. If you're listening to this as it's dropping, this is the second episode this week because we're just playing a little little catch-up and talking about the second part of night in the woods i uh i you know i still haven't slept one full night in the woods yet so i don't know what's going on I'm feeling i'm still at this point part two feeling a little betrayed uh but yeah i'm ready to to explore the the, the town with you day in the Although, town did you catch uh in this section of the game we got like what do they call it when it's like the title of the thing is said in the in the movie or the game oh i don't know what that's called but yeah uh, i love that <laughs> yeah we had that moment in this second section and i was just like oh it's always so satisfying i know it's cheesy but i don't care um so i'm excited because we had that moment so we at least got we got that like that part in pride and prejudice when elizabeth bennett turns to the camera and she looks <laughs> deadpan she goes it really was a pride and a prejudice and yeah. then like you're like the michael bay like what <laughs> i've done yeah i love that yeah my favorite part mm-hmm. of pride and prejudice for sure yeah uh for folks who are fresh to the club or if you need a reminder <laughs> if you go to geeksandgrounds.com that is the place where you can sign up for the newsletter where every week we will send you uh, a notice when the podcast is live, as well as additional resources to help you further delve into understanding the game, exploring the themes of the game, and also just links that we talk about in the show for stuff that we find interesting and engaging. So subscribe to the newsletter. You can also find the Discord link on the website to join the community of other people mm-hmm. discussing and playing the game at the same time. And it's a great community of people. So I highly encourage if you like Discord and meeting new folks, hop on in. Uh, because we just did a recording in our time with uh, just the other day, <laughs> we're playing catch up. <laughs> we're going to have a bit of an abbreviated pastry case today. So normally with pastry case, it's a grab bag of topics news from the industry what we're playing reading and watching outside of the monthly brew um today we are all pastried up because <laughs> we haven't done anything i'm all else. full of pastries is what happened i yeah. had a, a key lime croissant yesterday croissant and that now i'm all full amazing i did not have a key lime croissant and I am very jealous. <laughs> um, so what we'll do is we'll share some of the games that we didn't have an opportunity to share indie releases that are notable coming out this week. There are so many titles. So what we do is try and curate some of the ones that look particularly intriguing uh, for you to check out. So we've got Caravan Sandwich coming out on the 12th. This is the the launch of this title. It's I think you played this during a Next Fest, Joel. I did. Um, yeah. It Do you w- remember like some of the vibes that you got and what you thought? Yeah, you know, it was uh it was really interesting because as you I, the opening of the game reminded me of the opening of Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood where you're kind of like you were on the beach mm. and you're like making pizza or something like that. I think it might have been like the Steam Next Fest demo that we played for Cosmic Wheel. Uh, and Caravan Sandwich had me, like it kind of had similar feelings for me where like mm-hmm. it seems like, oh, we're going to get some interesting uh, communal bonds here. Um, I'm obviously very in- interested in like the magic that's happening. So, yeah, I mean, I don't remember any specifics about the story itself, but I definitely remember the the energy around the the demo being really fun. Yeah. And on Steam, it's it's a pretty vague Steam description. It just says embark on a journey across landscapes um, with captivating narrative driven exploration adventure. And honestly, I kind of got like not through the aesthetic, but somehow the atmosphere and the vibes felt very sable like sable. Right. Yeah. Um, in an interesting way, I think it's this idea of just exploring a, a space um, in a really calm sort of way. It, I don't think there was any combat or maybe very light combat if they did have it. So, yeah, very beautiful game. It's gorgeous. 
Uh, we also have Foul Damage, <laughs> F-O-W-L, uh, coming out on the 13th on PC. This is one I actually tried a little bit at PAX West. It was one of the PAX Rising, which is what they do to curate sort of up-and-coming self-published mm. indie games. Um, it's this really cute puzzle platformer, atmospheric. You play an egg, ostensibly a bird egg, which is why the foul uh, pun is mm -hmm. there. Okay. Um, and the world is nice. It's like a very cute game, but it also alludes to some like more eerie moments. I don't think it's straight up scary. It's just like there's a lot of mechanical stuff that seems a little bit like dystopic and not very not very uh, friendly to an egg. So really cute if you're looking at that. That also has a free demo if you're interested in just giving it a shot. Mexico 1921 A Deep Slumber launches on the 13th as well on PC. This is cool. I love games that explore historical moments in time. Uh, and this is one about, uh, they say it's immerse yourself in an emotional, intriguing narrative adventure about the awakening of a country. Um, and it follows a photojournalist that is like, taking part and documenting like this revolution happening in mexico oh interesting really cool like story and concept and i love again when video games and like it's not education necessarily it's not it's meant to be a game and entertaining but i think there's this educational element that i really mm. enjoy mm. um <laughs> former teacher so i guess there's you that know. <laughs> you we know. know what it is i know i'm like oh if i was in the classroom and i had this game to be able to use and discuss so cool um but yeah it looks really really good and finally a very hotly anticipated title for me and i know lots of folks in the community right. plucky squire it's coming out on the 17th uh it looks so cute it's basically storybook characters uh discovering from their 2D perspective, a 3D world, and all of the action that ensues along with it. It looks so good. That sounds really cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's coming out, and I'm very excited to play that. So as always, subscribe to the newsletter. We have links to these games, uh, as well as additional fun stuff in there, along with links to the podcast. So you can go to geeksandcrowns.com for that. <sighs> I'm ready. Are you ready? I am. It's a weird autumn time right now. So, it's, you know. It's Taylor Swift's rejected song title. She's like, okay, we've got Cool <laughs> yeah. Summer. That one works. What mm -hmm, type of mm -hmm. autumn is it? Weird autumn. Weird Great. autumn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. The new the new album. I cannot wait. Uh, so, Weird Autumn begins. We're on, we just finished A Nightmare. We wake up. I will say, this is where that sort of slice of life vibe comes through, where we, in this sequence and section of the game, we have the routine that you talked about, where we are literally every day, you wake up, you just walk around town, you come back home and you go to sleep. Um, I know you were like, I'm not a huge fan of it. I loved it. <laughs> I was like, it's so mundane, but I found it very comforting and mm. it was interesting to fall into this routine and half of my brain wanted May to sort of snap out of it a little bit. And I was like, May, what are we doing though? Like, why are we here? I feel pressure coming from your parents, which we'll talk about. I'm feeling some stuff that's pulling you in these different directions, but you are very much stuck in. I'm going to blissfully focus on just spending time with friends and not really doing much anything other than enjoying my time. Yeah. There was like, I, I where it's the difference between how I felt as a gamer versus how I feel as like a critic, if you will, mm -hmm. like as a gamer, it really graded on me. Cause it was like, I have to take the same journey all the way to the left of the screen again. Mm -hmm. And there's no faster way to get there. There's no shortcuts. And I don't want to talk to these townspeople. I just want to like get <laughs> through this day. But like as a person who's trying to be considerate of the narrative and intention, like I, I'm going to keep using that word. Like mm -hmm. the intentionality is clear. They want you like the aimlessness that May is feeling. I think they want you to feel as a player. Yeah. And they absolutely succeeded at that. Like I wrote down like double stars. Like I don't feel like I'm working toward anything. And mm -hmm. it's by how they chose to create this game and have you experience this section, 
it gave me a deep feeling of connection to May. Like I very much resonate with how she's feeling now. Yeah. Yeah. And I appreciated um, in how I played, I feel like I created a characterization of May that I think if you did not play with that same consideration to the intentionality, if you played a speed run version, I think you would also have a very different characterization of May. Um, because in taking the time where as we're going through the village, I try to look in every nook and cranny, talk to every person, interact with everything that I could possibly interact with. And I think for me, it allowed May to feel much more, I think, considerate and kind hearted, even in her chaos. Mm. And even in the ways that she um, is definitely struggling. Like, I don't, I think it's at this point, there was a conversation where we learn May's in therapy, for mm-hmm. example. So we know that, you know, from our first meeting with her and I was like, May's a bit of a dumpster fire. Yeah. Like what's going on? It's like, no, there actually is something like happening with her and her mental health and she's getting treatment for it. I don't, it sounds seems like the therapist like, was not very good. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, or, you know, it's, whatever the therapist is doing isn't quite hitting yet. I don't know, but, or and how long has May been seeing the therapist? We don't know. Um, but this idea of, okay, May is, I mean, depression, anxiety, who knows what else is happening with May or what else is happening with May. And I felt, I think a lot more sympathetic to her in this section and how, when I played her, May was a person who, despite all of the stuff she's going through, still takes the time to talk to people Mm. and notice people that maybe don't get to be noticed all the time. And I thought that was like just an interpretation that I had as I played that I really grasped and held on to. I love that. I was not saying the thing about having a bad therapist because of her. (laughs) I was saying it because there's like a line in here about how her therapist has another job too maybe like he's the town something else and oh, i didn't even catch that oh my gosh and the the therapist has explicitly been telling her to bottle up her emotions until she explodes like i can't remember what? where that happened but like yeah she's talking about it with i think greg or angus or somebody oh. and it's like and they're they're like joking around they're like she needs to get right. another therapist <laughs> so that's why you i say that what's incredible and you've just basically uh, open the door to another aspect of this part of the game the section the second section we have the opportunity in this section not only to explore the town but every day we get the option to hang out with either greg or b and Mm. so i think what's really exciting is i think we mostly picked different events and so you will have different conversations that have happened like i don't think i got that conversation about her therapist you're right yeah um whereas i think i hung out a bit more with b i think i only hung, hung out with greg once so we're gonna have very different experiences and i think it's going to create an even more sort of comprehensive version of like who may is and who some of these characters are which is really cool yeah that's really cool i because i definitely did not pick up uh, partially because i was semi speed running like waiting to like at some point i'm going to have a night in the woods and i'm gonna (laughs) get there um and i was like surely that's what matters in this game spoilers it's like the day-to-day that matters in this game but regardless yeah I, that's a really interesting point i totally didn't think about that i bet you're getting a super different characterization for me than what i've been having yeah. with greg because when i tell you about what hangs with greg have been like uh <laughs> it's interesting i will say i've had oh we've had some tough conversations in the b camp for sure <laughs> um which again to Catherine, who submitted the the question and and the thoughts on B and May's relationship I think this idea of like how do you either restore or at least salvage and move forward with what relationships you had in the past oh my gosh that question for me I'm still thinking about it because um, again I'm focusing a lot on B during this playthrough awesome uh so why don't you tell us a little bit about what your your b hangs uh or just like your general day-to-day because you also did hang out with greg but like yeah i'd love to just hear about your experience first and kind of like probe into that okay so i guess we can start because i think we've been just been going through each day so like day four ish um you know we wake up we leave home mom is 
chilling. I always love talking to mom. I love that mom also says, don't climb on the power lines. She's like, don't do this. And of course you're like, well, I'm going to go climb on the power lines. I certainly am and did um, and will. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, thank you. Um, so nice bit of tutorialization, but I think it also adds to May's character where it's like, of course May is going to climb the power lines once someone says don't. Um, we meet Selma, who we... I don't know if you've been getting Selma's poems and like talking to Selma every day. I don't even know who Selma um, is. Selma is, I think she's like a bear technically. I don't remember what animal she is, but she sits on the stoop um, like in that first section of the town right after you leave your house. And every day I talk to her and it's really interesting because she reminds me of a parallel to May where May has gone to college and left Um and she's kind of she's going through therapy and also journaling. Selma stayed home, but has also been told to like I think write poems, you know, and journal for <laughs> for a bit of her mental health. And so she's been writing poetry. And so every day I've made a point to talk to Selma and just listen to her poem. Aww. And a lot of them are about snacks, which is very valid and good. Um, <laughs> but there again, it's one of those things that I've loved because it makes me think of May as a bit more of a considerate person than I think some of our initial guts reactions may have indicated. Um, we, I also walked down to like the subway. I don't know what it is. It's like yeah. the subway section. Um, I remember on the first day it got painted over, uh, which was really funny. Cause you have like, I don't know if they're the HOA or like the town committee or whatever city hall bureaucracy people but <laughs> did you see their reaction to that no <laughs> okay so uh, they are talking to like aunt mall cop and aunt mall cop's like what do you want me to do clearly does not care um and the city council is like these hooligan teenagers this is like terrorism what they're doing to the town and this mural and instantly they're just like hang them like so aggressive and violent and out for blood for these poor teenagers who probably are just like they have nothing else to do on a friday night you know what i mean they're just gonna that's all they have um so that was a really fascinating mini scene we're seeing like how aunt mall cop and the city council are just kind of this like the representation of this bureaucracy and mm. this like sort of inefficiency in this town um and yeah, I wandered mm -hmm. up to meet the pastor because the church is opened up, I think, on this mm. day as well. Did you talk with the church person? I did eventually. It was a little bit okay. later for me, but I just okay. real quick, it's interesting the in the subway area. Yeah. The is there's like a pierogi stand down there, right? Yes. Yeah. Because I feel like there is a another storyline happening and it's really subtle about May's parents. I don't know if it's like mm -hmm. supposed to be like a Polish background type of thing, but um, pierogies get brought up a lot in, in a few different contexts. And I'm just wondering her last name, I think is Polish too, something like that. I think so. Yeah. So, it sounds like it might be perhaps. So I, I just think it's interesting that like, it's pretty subtle and not like the thrust of the story, but the, the subway area was the first time that I noticed it. Yeah. Well, and I think, again, we, I think you can talk to the person who's like running the pierogi stand once, but we haven't gotten, or I haven't gotten any additional dialogue with them. Yeah, so neither. I'm curious to see if we get a bit more. You can steal pretzels from the pierogi stand. I which... did not successfully do that. Uh, really? I do it I... every day. Oh, funny. <laughs> What a ghoul um, again. Bad influence. I am truly. Um, again, like the city council said, basically terrorism in the small community, it's basically right? Terrorism. Oh my gosh. Um no, I've been stealing the pretzels because in my exploration, I found a nest of rats in one of the abandoned buildings, and you can feed oh. them pretzels. And so I've been feeding them pretzels every day. <laughs> Oh no. Okay, you and just they're... unlock something for me and I now know that I missed something. So keep going. Oh, okay. Um yeah, there uh, May calls them her miracle rats and she's like, "I'm not ready to be a mom." <laughs> but she's like taking care of these rats, which again, I'm like it's interesting cuz 
I'm playing May as a character willing to every day go and feed these creatures. And she's able to take on responsibility for these little guys, but like isn't quite ready to face her realities. And so it, it's just it's very interesting. Like, again, we haven't talked about the friend hangouts yet because there has been so much even aside from that. I've been able to in exploring the town. Mm. It's been a really beautiful way to just get to know May and and um, uh, uh, beyond just her with her other friends. So um but yeah, I... How was your conversation at the church? Oh, right. Okay. Um, at the church, we met the pastor who, I will admit, I went into that conversation with a heavy dose of skepticism. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised because the pastor seems to be much more about the kind actions involved with faith and religion less so than preaching, at least when talking with May. Um, this was really exemplified in the first interaction because I saw the pastor talking with, I think his name was Bruce. He's like the wanderer that lives behind the church. Mm -hmm. And you first, at least when I first saw the pastor, she was like, hey, do you want blankets? Like, what do you need? What can I bring you? Um, and Bruce was like, yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of cold. So a couple blankets would be great. And so this idea of faith cropped up a lot more in the second section. And hmm. what does, it, what does God mean? And what actions does God um, inspire in people was something that I think I started to notice. And I want to keep that in my mind as I keep moving forward. What were your interactions with the pastor? I don't think I went to the church at all until way later into my playthrough. I didn't even go up the oh. stairs until much, oh. much, much later. Um, yeah, I think it might have been even like after the Har Fest. Like it was oh, very okay. late for me. Um, I don't know. He gave me like cool youth pastor energy vibes. Just like. Yeah. It it's just such a hard thing for me still, like personally, mm -hmm. just like even when people yeah. are doing things that I consider to be good things, like to me, it's like participating in a system of harm, and I I just can't deal with yeah. it. So, I it's interesting. Was the mom in the church when you went to it? Yes, and we do learn that our mom works in the church right through this. Yeah. So, what was your conversation with her like? Because I'm I'm wondering if you've maybe had multiple, or did you just have the one that you've had with her in the church? I've had multiple. So um, the first couple, a lot of it was just like commenting on stuff that maybe we started talking about in the morning, a little bit playful. By the end of the section, though, um, and we'll we'll delve into this further, our conversations with our mom get more and more tense. Hmm. Um, and I would say maybe a little bit more contentious every, every day. So by the end of this part two, uh, there is definitely a divide building up between specifically uh, May's mom and May. Yeah, I'm trying to see where I... Yeah, okay. So I went to talk to her at the very end of the section. I only talked to her one time in the church. Mm -hmm. And that one time was kind of this explosive argument about how, like, why did you leave college and yada, yada. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, I'm just... I'm wondering if because I went at the end if it just crammed all of those mini conversations that you had into one for me, or if I, because I waited until the end only had this one contentious conversation with her. It was no, there were definitely like more pleasant conversations that we had at the beginning where it was like, what are you up to? Like, what are you working on today? You know, things like that. Um, prior to this, well, the last conversation I had in church was like super terse. Like we didn't even talk really. My mom was, May's mom was like, I I'm busy. Like, don't talk to me right now. But our tense conversation happened in the morning breakfast, like table scene. <laughs> oh, so, interesting. So yeah. my breakfast table scenes have always been pleasant. It was really just the church conversation that was really rough. Oh, weird. Yeah. Weird. On the final day, like, what is it? Um, I think it was Harfest's day. Let me look at my notes. Um, yeah, Harfest day. Mom, I wrote, Mom is straight up pissed. <laughs> um, and this is where she gives the line that basically um, 
instead mm-hmm. of May going to college, they may as well have thrown the money and time and efforts into a hole. And that would have been just as, you know, this outcome would have been the same. Did she say that line to you in the church? It wasn't, I don't remember if I got the money into a hole. She definitely did reference money, but like she, it was in a list of things. She was Mm -hmm. like, we did all of this stuff for you and you're not there anymore. Um, She's always, yeah, she was definitely not happy, but like what became really clear in the one conversation I had with her was that the mom was projecting like her own insecurities about like where she is in life onto May. And that it's just so interesting. Like, I wonder what would be different if I had seen her every day. Like if that would somehow change what yeah. my experience Did you talk was. to the mom every day for breakfast as well? Only if I had to. <laughs> uh, okay, that's that may be why what and what changed a little bit, I think. Because, yeah, I talked to mom every day before leaving for, for exploration. Is she always there for you? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So I only talk to her when she, like, calls me over. So oh, if she doesn't call okay. me over, I don't. Yeah, no, I talk to her every day. Oh, what a um, good daughter. I know. I was like, mom is cool. And yeah, yeah. which made the tension feel much more apparent because, you know, we've had up until that point, like really fun, pleasant conversations. We're joking about eels and all of this other stuff, you know. Um, but yeah, so hanging out. I chose to hang out with B, but I feel like I've also talked a lot for mm. to start. So I would love to hear about you said you picked Greg. So, yeah, I uh, didn't realize that you could pick only one person per day. I thought that uh, there was just okay. that you got to choose. I thought you were being forced through the story to only talk to one. So when I was like, OK, I've talked to Greg and he's saying, do you want to go hang out? And I say, yes. I didn't realize there was another option. Like, mm. I just thought it was like a, a linear story. So I didn't realize yeah. that there was like choice at all. The I am an absolute hooligan with Greg. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'll just kind of give you like the broad strokes of like how I spent my time with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first time we broke into an abandoned uh, like superstore, like a Walmart and <laughs> stole a bunch of store mascots. Uh, the second time we went and just broke light bulbs in a parking lot, like big expensive like the tubular like yeah. fluorescent lights um so we've I, i've only done shenanigans <laughs> with him oh we went to the woods and practiced stabbing each other's hands and then what? uh shot arrows at a the the god oh. of the forest which is like a, a dummy that had been set up so oh my gosh we'll dive deep into these but like it's all been a hooligan hijinks uh for me greg, and greg greg really said like be gay do crimes because greg is like <laughs> i'm here ready to oh my gosh i love greg so much oh i need to replay this just so i can like experience those scenes because i love greg <laughs> so yeah let, let's talk a bit about this um i oh and you we met a side character on that first day that uh, germ warfare uh yeah. jeremy wharton oh, yeah. germ. uh germ uh <laughs> Seems like a really interesting kind of gothy kid, uh, very much like near and dear to my heart. So honestly, a little weirdo. And I love, I love germ. Like love, just we, we love weird. little weirdos on this yeah, show. Yeah, he's a little weirdo. Um, yeah, germ. Oh my gosh. Wait, so did you hang out with germ in your hangouts with Greg or was it just you and Greg? <laughs> so in the first one, we meet a guy named Steve Scriggins. <laughs> I think it's the only time that I see him in the entire game. Because yeah. he's the one that helps us break into this mm-hmm. abandoned Walmart or whatever. Steve Scriggins. Classic Steve Scriggins. Dang, Steve. Um, <sighs> but it was very much a like, it was an interesting kind of little puzzly moment. Like there's a door and it's locked and I have to go and find the key oh, and bring fun. it back. Uh, and once you get down there, there are these three mascots from the, the Walmart or whatever. And <laughs> uh you get to choose which one you want to take and Greg is going to take one and Steve Scriggins is going to take the other. Oh my Um, gosh. And then after that, you have a little mini game where you all go out and uh, have food. And so you get pierogies. And so there's a fun little mini game where you try to throw pierogies into Greg's mouth. (laughs) It was really hard. It was like, fun and satisfying but like really hard to get it right so you had such a i feel like you had so much fun in your in these hangouts 
it was uh that one was like very much like didn't really learn anything except for that these two mm-hmm. did hijinks back in high school they're doing hijinks again yeah um should i just talk about the other uh like kind of hangs with him mm-hmm. yeah it's like, like the timeline doesn't really matter for these yeah um, they're nice little vignettes i feel yeah like. that's so this is what it is and like i didn't realize this until you started talking about this at the beginning of the episode that like you are investing in a storyline here, like these little vignettes Mm, and mm -hmm. a character. And so I definitely get one night with B, which we'll talk about, but like, I didn't realize that I was like consciously choosing to learn more about Greg and like our relationship, but it was really interesting. The next time we hung out uh, was actually, I am now seeing in my notes, this is when I talked about my therapist. We go to the woods and we both take knives and we're going to play a, <laughs> no. like a stabbing game. And it was the, it's like the first person to flinch three times. And so basically, like, if you can imagine, oh my gosh, like almost like an, a randomized game of Pong where you have two <laughs> fists holding knives going up and down. Mm-hmm. And like you choose when you stab at their hand and they choose when they stab at your hand. And like when you stab a little like red bloody X appears on your finger. Oh and my God. your goal is to stab him nine times before he stabs you nine times. Uh, and <laughs> that's, that's what we're doing. Um, but I think the theme, like you start getting some of the like kind of anti-capitalist themes here. You start learning mm-hmm. more about the town getting abandoned. You learn more, more about how like Greg feels very much not into this job uh and he and mm-hmm. he tells you that like he and angus are planning on moving away they're like saving up their money yeah. and they're gonna leave town um and i think the the framing that we hear is that greg is not doing well like as a person mm. he's not doing well okay and he also in this moment like references that angus had a really tough home life and that someday we should ask him about that um so I think those were some of the like big major things. The last hangout was really light and it was, I think it was like perhaps the day of the Harfest and it was like go, literally going into the back parking lot and throwing these fluorescent light bulbs, which I don't know if you all know this. These are like a hundred bucks a pop in the States. Like they are expensive. So he's for his job, taking their light bulbs that cost a hundred dollars each and just <laughs> destroying them. <laughs> amazing and it's actually like the mini game is he throws them in the air and you have your bat and you're trying to like Mm -hmm. break them as he throws them to you so oh my gosh those are my greg hangs uh i don't know where did you have any curiosities about that like interesting things about those hangs i think i I find that the the theme of them is really interesting and the actions you take with greg are really interesting we talked a bit about how like may is coming back and she's like sort of reverting to this more childlike sense of self where she's back home she's sort of foregoing and avoiding responsibilities and so it's interesting hearing you talk about how greg is like tired of his job wants to you know, save up all this money to go move with Angus and get out of town. But like, I think it's really interesting how May and Greg sort of bring out this more, like they're encouraging each other and they are like the co-conspirator gremlins. I think that's really interesting. Oh man. Again, I need to, I need to play this again. Um, It's definitely, it's strange though. Cause it's like, I, I'm struggling right now. Like as we're talking about this to identify where we as a player have agency, so there's a scene mm-hmm. because now that I finished this, we're going to talk about later down the road. And I'm wondering if I only got that scene because of the hijinks with Greg or if you will also get it. So yeah. uh, we'll talk about it as we get further into the gang, at gang okay. into the game. <laughs> uh, but tell me a little bit about B, like tell me about your hangs. Like what were those experiences like? Not as fun. Well, no, there's fun moments, but they are definitely, I think, more dense Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the conversations that they have. So the first hangout I have with B is they decide to go to the mall. I think May actually is the one who wants to go to the mall and B is kind of like, there's nothing really there, but I guess like, let's go. And so you go to the mall um, and B 
is kind of just like, well, here it is. Every like, mm-hmm. there's the shops are kind of closed down. Mm-hmm. Nobody's really there and may and be discussed about how like the internet and once again this discussion of economic downturn the internet changing sort of the the quote the economy this like bro you know like what happened to the economy the internet um it's all such vague vague terms but it is how it works right it's just sort of these vague things that we think about impacting us day to day um they go to the shop called you revolution which is essentially a hot topic like Oh, <laughs> so fun! So there's like the glow in the, or, <laughs> excuse me, the glow in the dark posters, the uh, just sort of band yeah. posters, t-shirts, you know, a giant belt buckles, uh, and so May nice. is again being the mischievous one, mischievous one that she is. She's like, let's steal a belt buckle and so may steals a belt buckle this is where i learned how to steal the mechanic you know and um b does not want to but may actually sort of peer pressures her into stealing a belt buckle um and it caught like b is just like what i don't even want this like what are we doing um and so again it's interesting comparing that to greg who's very willing to just like dive in and kind of also pretend even for a little bit to escape well, these responsibilities and like more wow. adult ways of moving through the world um huh you then go to the food court mall mall food court and um b has a line that i wrote down um she says they, they're just talking about life and sort of how the, their paths diverged. Um, and B says, not knowing how something worked used to seem like magic. Now, yeah. not knowing means it might be going wrong and I might not be able to fix it. It really helped knowing someone was at the controls, you know? And this is them talking about faith in particular and how neither of them really believe in God. Neither of them practice religion anymore. Um, and, and B is struggling with this idea of perhaps there is no one steering the car, you know, no one's at the wheel and mm-hmm. she, she's struggling with that. Um, what is super charming though, is they're sitting by this fountain that is no longer turned on. Um, but may sneaks up <laughs> to the top of the control tower where the fountains controls are and starts yeah. <laughs> basically water spraying people who walk by um, to get be to cheer up and she goes over the intercom and she's basically like it's me god you know i hate cops everyone get drenched and like sprays everyone and it's so cute because it's a moment where i think for the first time both of them are happy b is laughing b has not laughed this entire time i wish i got to experience b's laughter honestly i would go and watch the scene like on youtube or something because it's so I think it's my favorite scene thus far in the game because they are you can you can see their friendship in this moment and you can see B having fun May trying to cheer up her friend and it's just so silly and good and it's like a good use of the gremlin powers you know <laughs> oh I'm so jealous oh, it was it was really beautiful um by the time they go to leave the mall um what they also talk about is like, hey, the workers, we're not going to get them in trouble with the system for us stealing. So they actually return the belt buckles. Interesting. Um, and this is B's idea. So again, we're going to, B is definitely the more responsible one. But May agrees, like, this idea of the system does not care for the individual. So we're going to, like, protect the individual here. And um, yeah, they they go home. And I think I wrote down um, B as they're leaving, say, like, let it die in peace. And she's talking about the mall, but I think it's this idea, again, we're talking about death a lot of different forms in this yeah. game. So this idea of, like, what does it mean to let something go, have it become obsolete, and what does it mean to move on? So, yeah, that was the hangout with B, the first one. Again, it's so dense. There's, yeah. there's a lot. There's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It sounds a lot heavier than mine, that's for sure. Like, I think they, we get some similar <laughs> messages by, like, being in the closed-down Walmart or whatever, about, about like, right. industry leaving. But, like, definitely it is in passing. It is not mm-hmm. a, a central motif of these hangouts, for sure. Yeah. Um, the second hangout with B 
was rough. It was really, I, oh man, it got me so choked up because you go grocery shopping with B um, and <laughs> May kind of invites herself over for dinner. So May is like not <laughs> already a bit on thin ice with B and B's like, fine, come over for dinner. You meet B's dad and they have this conversation about how to run the shop and B's trying to like get her dad to sign a thing and to like check on stuff, make sure the pay stubs go out on time. And her dad mm -hmm. straight up says like, whose name is on the checks? Whose name is on the deed of the store? It's me. So stop. And it's like, clearly B is the one making sure everything happens. He's just watching TV at home. Yeah. Um, I'm oh. sure, you know, it's tough because it's like, you don't know what her dad has gone through. This is a town where everyone's got stuff that they're working through. And I'm yeah. sure her dad has stuff that he's going through, but he is not being a good parent or boss to be. And so it's like, just really painful to see that interaction and then oh man then they go into B's room because they're just like you know what let's just go into the room hang out there and B actually shares a story about how um because they're talking about how B wishes she could like go to college and she mentions um you know she's stuck with the store and she also mentions that there's a employee, I think his name was Richard, is, is Richard or something like that. Um, she's like, yeah, I have this like coworker. My dad, you know, hires yeah. him for all of the jobs and stuff, but mm -hmm. he, we can't let him go. But man, he's yeah. such a creep. My dad, when I was young, told me to not hang out with him because mm -hmm. he's worried like something may happen. And so we have this mm -hmm. situation that we learn where B is – working with someone who's potentially an abuser of some sort. Um, and May is just straight up like, you got to say something. You got to fire him. You got to do something. And B, it just gets really pissed at May because she's like, what am I supposed to do? If we fire him, we don't have any more people on staff and we need him because he's our best worker. If we don't have him, we're, we're running out of business. Mm -hmm. uh, if we fire him, we also have a family that he is supporting currently that now doesn't have any income. Does his wife and kids, you know, do they deserve to not have Oof. the food they need? Um, you know, if I create a fuss in this small town, what does that do for our social standing and like how other people will interact with us? Like, it's not as easy as just firing him, even though it technically would be the right thing to do. And she basically reams me for not understanding the complexities of a situation like that, particularly in a small town. And kind of going off the conversation we have in the beginning of this game, it's yeah. this idea of like, this is messy and it's horrible. And yeah, it was like, obviously we want B to do something and say something, but seeing B and how she's like, what am I supposed to do? Because everything I do is a lose-lose. Um, oh, it was just really heavy, but it was also really well done. Like I could, oh man. Yeah, I could talk forever about this conversation. That's I don't so think I've read one that's good. Yeah. I really struggle with this uh, just in general and in yeah. like corporate America where it's like, if I'm working with someone, a coworker that's not doing a great job or like, I know they could be doing a better job or maybe they're doing something that's like slowing us down in some way. It's like, yeah, but like it's annoying and I like doing quality work, but it's really hard for me to justify like ending someone's livelihood because they're not excellent at, at what they do. And this is even like a, a step with more complexity because of something outside of work that's like, like mm -hmm. not super ignorable. Like it's, it's just really challenging. Mm -hmm. I will say like when I was working as like an assistant principal and I had to let go of teachers, it was because they were actively doing things that I perceived as being harmful to children. Like mm -hmm. they were, that didn't use good language with them or were aggressive or like were not actually teaching them in a way that was leading to their success. And so it's like, well, at this point, like children's lives actually rely, rely on you to be excellent at what you do. And so I, I don't have as much compunction about like letting that person go in that scenario. 
Mm-hmm. But in corporate America, it's really hard for me to justify. <laughs> Well, and I think that the tough part is, is like you wish because we don't know as well as 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 far as they framed it in the game. We don't know if Richard is just a creep or if he has done things to other kids in the town. Right. And so it's like B, I think, also alludes to this fact where it's like, what are we going to do like on this this, you know, we just say he's creepy. We can't fire someone for being creepy. Um, But at the same time, I'm like why like her dad should have done something yes um but at the same time again b if i said that if i was may and said that to be like your dad should have done something b would have been like we wouldn't have income you know and so it's like this again there is what we know is morally right and then there is this idea of but real life is messier yeah it's like how do you create a system in which people can do the thing that is safest Mm -hmm. and right but offers them protections because it's like they're in a place in a system that does not protect them for doing things that protect one another in this case that's so real god that's so real it was it was hard it was again i don't think i've read a conversation like that in a game and it was really heart-wrenching and so good because i've lived in small towns and i've I also taught in schools where I had kids coming to me saying these type of things and everyone in the village knew, but it's like, what's challenging is in this also very small town, there are like really stringent norms that happen because the community is much more isolated. And so like, I just, this conversation was so real to me um, in a way that was not great, but also really powerful. Yeah. Like I hate saying that, but yeah. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. I, I again, I think this game, the way it deals with like really nuanced interpersonal relationships, it's one of the best I've ever played. And mm-hmm. so you're just kind of highlighting that yet again. Yeah, and it sucks because yeah, I think the conversation ends with you get the two two options, and it's funny because they're both variants of May saying like, "But you always have a choice, or you can always choose," and it's like that's not really the thing you should say right now to your friend who is clearly distressed and upset and like but those are the only options you have which was like really interesting because this option of you the dialogue of you can always choose and i'm like i don't want to choose either of these Mm. um and yeah so it ends with b kicking you out and just saying i'm done with you right now you need to go um that's really tough though because it's like (sighs) It, it was probably not the right time, probably not the right tact, but like right. that message of like, ultimately you are the only one with any uh, like agency to choose here is true. And like when we don't have those conversations mm-hmm. with people who do have that influence, when it's like, oh, it's too uncomfortable to remind them that like ultimately it is their choice, like a lot of systemic harm can happen. And so it's like, it, pro- it certainly was not yeah. the way to do that or the time to yeah, do that. Yeah, I'm like, you. Know, it's like, especially after she's just said all of the ways that she feels so powerless, I was like, May, this is like, it's yeah. a good conversation to have. I, I see what you're trying to do. But also, like, you have absolutely, once again, second time in like two days, put your foot in your mouth with B. Um, you need to like back off <laughs> just for a little bit. And this yeah. is so interesting. Can I talk just a minute about my B experience? My my B hang? Yeah. Um, so I went to B, I'm probably on like the second of the days that we had in this section. Mm-hmm. Um and she the, the person that worked at the store couldn't do this repair job out in the woods. Yeah. And so B took me on a repair job and we go to this old lady's house. Did you do this at all? Does this sound familiar? No. I didn't do this. We go to this old lady's house and like, this is like after we've learned about like how we've messed up the conversation about B's mom and whatever. So like, we are not cool at this point. Yeah. Um, But basically we go to this old lady's house who has a history of locking the repair people in the basement as they're going to fix her (laughs) furnace. (laughs) And we go down there, we fix this furnace. Sure enough, the furnace 
uh, is fixed, but we get locked into the basement. And the only way to get out is for May to take a baseball bat and destroy the furnace so that it will make the annoying sound again. So the old lady will come down and check on the furnace (laughs) in the basement. And it's one of those things where it's like, um, again, gremlin behavior uh, that B uses and you use to kind of repair your relationship. So it's like, I had this hard foot in your mouth moment about her mom. Mm -hmm. Uh, The next thing I have is this experience with B where we go out and fix the furnace. And like I helped, I did a solid and I also got us out. And that's it. Like we're on good terms after that for the rest of the game. So because I didn't spend more time, because I I don't think I did any more like hangouts with B specifically. Right. Um, and so I bet that because I didn't dig deeper, I was not rewarded with like, you know, damaging and then repairing and like ultimately forming this really mm-hmm. deep relationship with her. Um, yeah. Which I didn't realize I was making that, that trade off at all. But I I just got to this point of like, oh, we have this now polite relationship where we're friends and we hang out, we have a good time. And I'm not going to dig into all of this stuff happening with her family and her job. Yeah. Which is, it's tough because it's like, as I, I like the distinction you made because like as a gamer, as a player, you want like all of the content. But I think as the way the story is modeled and set, it's a really great indicator of and sort of through line of what are you putting your time into? Mm-hmm. Um, how are you investing in the relationships? Because how you invest in them is going to be sort of what you get out. And it's like, if you choose not to hang out with someone, they probably won't talk about some of these like deep, dark secrets and thoughts and like hard conversations. Uh, so yeah, really interesting. Yeah. I, so you said you did have a hangout with Greg at this at some point during this? I did. Yeah. I think it was my, let's see, what day was it? Um, let's see. My first one was with B in the mall. My second day was with Greg and it was where he was wearing his, he calls it the, the fascist hat. <laughs> okay. I did not get this. You so did? tell okay. me about it. <laughs> This was actually a really nice like palate cleanser to sort of the heavier B conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I hung out with Greg. He's wearing a hat that he put an anarchy symbol on, but apparently it's like a military hat that was worn by like fascist army something or other, and it has a bullet hole in it. So he's like, no, this is like a trophy, you know. So. I, and it has an anarchy symbol on it. So now it's not fashion. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah. Which again, it kind of like, it ties into this sort of childlike state that they may and Greg bring out in each other. Cause I feel like it's such an, it's a simplified way of thinking about some of these really complex things like you wearing this hat. I feel like it's kind of a complex thing to wear a complex symbol to adopt. Um, but to Greg, it's like, Nope, it's got an anarchy symbol, so it's good. So it's good. <laughs> so it's yep. good. Um, but we went to a car because I think this is a tie-in to and a connector to if you have gotten the Walmart sort of mascot mm. things because Greg mentions he needs a battery for this project and you don't know what it is. And so you go to this car uh, and – Greg is like, all right, I'm the general. You're one of my troops. Go and break this car so we can get the battery out of it. And so we spend the week, or not the weekend, the, the evening, breaking this car, bashing it with a bat. Um, May tries to grab the battery to pull it out, gets electrocuted, and for a second passes out. And you see what I am calling shark god, which looks, you know how your computer has that clippy that looks like a shark? Yeah, 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 yeah. You see shark clippy god the neon in the sky and may is like am i dead and shark god says a few things um and you wake up like five seconds later <laughs> and you take the battery and you go and put it in a mascot that greg the mascot that got. i stole yeah and so you animate this robot thing for angus because it's a present for angus <laughs> so really really cute um but yeah, just chaotic. And that's where I learned about their their plans to move to Bright Harbor and how May is just kind of like feeling a bit left in the dust. 
She doesn't say it, but you can see it. Yeah. That is so interesting. I wonder like if there's a way to play this as like I'm doing the B run. I just do all B stuff or I'm, I'm doing sure, the yeah. the Greg run. I just do all Greg stuff. Mm-hmm. Um so what else did you encounter during this phase? Cuz like we'll eventually get to Harfest. There's only one mm-hmm. other thing in my notes that I hit before Harfest. Um uh... and it was by the church. Yeah, okay. I guess there there are the two and a half things. Um, two other characters I want to mention are Rosa, who I think is like a dog puppy. I guess I she's, she's older. So she's okay. in that subway section underneath. Um, she seems to have had some sort of like fling or some romantic something or other. Or maybe it was just less. Well, I don't know. Maybe it wasn't romantic. Something or other with May's grandpa. And so she's telling you every day a little bit more about May's grandpa. Um, he was apparently also a troublemaker. And I mm-hmm. wrote down a line from her that was really interesting. Um, she mentions that we used to have places that brought us together, like the church and the union. Um, mm-hmm. And so she it was just like an interesting line about these spaces that used to bring communities together and this community doesn't seem to really have it anymore i mean we see it later like with the harfest it's like the show is happening in a hardware store (laughs) there isn't a community space for people to congregate that's like a nice venue or a park or like you know even the church is there but yeah there's no third spaces and like the church doesn't really fulfill that role anymore nobody ever goes to the church uh it seems like so i thought that was an interesting line um i've also hung out with lori uh the little mouse i think uh at the train tracks she normally sits like at the top of the roofs and she's this 14 year old that may will just go and chat Mm -hmm. with um And there's one really lovely scene where Lori invites us to go, like, basically lie between the train tracks. And they just, like, lie there and they smash, like, coins and metal trinkets um, on the tracks as the trains go by. And so they have just a really nice conversation there. Um, And I think it's, again, as I'm characterizing May, I think May sees a little bit of herself in Lori. Um, And Lori is still, again, middle school, like, eighth grade, maybe high school, ninth grade. So um that is so cool yeah. like you've had yeah. you've you've met a lot of like really rich experiences with these town townsfolks that i just completely did not have so yeah in your speed run a lot of depth. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um and the last one was um I forgot, I did not write his name down, but the Stargazer guy. Did you ever meet up with him on the rooftops? I did meet up with the Stargazer guy one time and looked through the telescope and I couldn't yeah. figure out what to do. And so I <laughs> stopped. It took me a second yeah. as well because I could like see the wavelengths getting bigger. Um, it's like you have to find the star that locks, the, like makes the wavelengths really big oh. and hover over it for a second longer than you would think. <laughs> so... It's not the most intuitive. There were a couple mini games like that where I felt like it, the the instructions were just a little opaque for what you were supposed to do, and I was yeah. like, I think this is kind of slowing the pace of the game because I'm doing this thing and I can't figure it out. That happens to yeah. me a few times. Yeah, I think that was one. Again, we we haven't talked about the band practices. It's because that's just, they just happen to me. Honestly, they just Same. happen. I move Same. through them. Yep. Um. But you get when you talk to this guy, he basically every time you can talk to him, you get like two constellations that you look at and you get little stories, like little allegories that you can dive into. Oh, interesting. One in particular that I found they're all really good. Um, But one in particular was the story of this seer who was basically abandoned by the king because another astrologist came through and was able to explain the movement of the planets in Mm. more um, accurate terms. And so the seer was then disregarded. And then May makes a comment um, a little bit snide. I've been playing May a little bit snide as well when I have dialogue options, because I'm like, I feel like May would probably not be the nicest person all the time in her responses. And the, the astrologist guy, he says, okay, so do you think when something is obsolete, you can just like throw them away? Um, mm. And oh, what was the line specifically? Hold on. I need to find it. Cause it was like, it really, it was so good. It was, um, 
do, 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 do. I need to find the constellations. It was something about um, if things don't serve a purpose, like, oh, here we go. Um, so do you believe that some should go hungry and without homes because they are no longer useful to those in power? And I was like, what? Astrology <laughs> man? You just telling me this on a random afternoon? <laughs> Damn. So this idea Ooh. that, again, with this town that has, in a lot of ways, to the rest of society become obsolete, to a lot of the people in the town who don't overtly serve a purpose in, quote, society. It's like, they don't serve a purpose to those in power. What does that mean? Do we treat them as human beings do we render them obsolete like what does that look like and i thought that was such a good line just considering what we've been talking about yeah that's so fascinating like they're really pressing onto this point and that i mm -hmm. i don't know that i really picked up on this motif very strongly when i was playing it um so yeah i'm, I'm really glad that we're talking about this yeah but i think that was it for me and those days prior to the harfest um anything you wanted to add as well uh, just that there are uh, two two very, very small things on mm -hmm. the bulletin board by the church. There is like if you read the advertisements, they're advertising their youth ministry that's called Transform, which is oh T-R-A-N-S, the number four, R-M. And it was the most youth group like <laughs> uh, my youth group was called like why 360 because you were supposed to like go no, out of the world out of the world facing this direction and do a full circle so you're going back into the world or something like that like using wow. the blending of numbers and words to like sound cool for your youth ministry is such a thing and it was like uh I, I wish we could talk to these creators so that I could ask them about some of this to see what their their history oh. is with that because it was just so perfect. Um, Man, I'm so glad because again, I don't have that history like you. Like we did not grow up going to church really, uh, and so having that insight from you is so good because I did not even that did not register for me at all. It's a great joke, the top tier <laughs> joke. Um, and then past the church, there's like a spooky graveyardish area mm -hmm. um where a bunch of goth kids are hanging out yes oh my gosh and like uh, nothing really like important happened there this time that i was talking to them but they kind of pop up a bit throughout the game but um it was just really fun and reminded me of, like boys don't cry or something like that it was very much that like the smith's energy i got i thought it was a nod to like the fates and like hamlet or something Oh, damn. I was like, because they talk, I don't think it was really that deep. I think it was maybe just three goth kids, but they all like, they talk in sort of an consecutive order and they finish each other's sentences and they sort of tell your, they tell your future or fortune or something. And do, do I, I got three fates vibes so much from these kids. Oh, I bet you're right. Oh, I'm going to have to think about that some more. That's a, that's a great interpretation, Jenny. Wow. Yes. <laughs> I also high school literature for the win. <laughs> well done. I and, and then I also want to just call it the one mechanical thing that would have made me like like I I love this game like it's been really great. But the one thing that I think would have made this best game mm -hmm. is if you could just jump on the cars as they're driving by and ride them to your destination. Oh man! Or like yeah. have a skateboard so that you like sketch behind them. That would have taken this game f from like great to true excellence i uh, think that honestly to be able to jump on the cars would be just like chef's kiss so good. Very good right <laughs> yeah and serves a purpose because i think you mentioned it earlier but you do after the third day for me it was the third day i'm sure for you it was <laughs> day one yeah you get to the point where like i know where i want to go i just have to like take the time to run there and again design narratively i understand like you said but it, it would be really fun to because it fits may's personality too jumping yeah. on cars that checks out 
Yeah, even if it was just like a, when the truck happens to come by, because it's mostly cars. Like, right. it could have still been like gamified or something, but a little something, something there could have been cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, shall we talk about the Harfest? Yes. Um, the Harfest. So, the morning of the Harfest is when my mom like had her mm-hmm. sort of blow up slash mini existential revelation. May also was very hurtful because May also was the one who was like, you're the one just living failures through me now. Like, and I'm just like, oh, God, May, I know hurt people hurt people. And I'm just like, I know, May, you're going through it. I feel for you. But like, that's damn. (laughs) That's so hurtful. Yeah. Um, But yeah, we go to the Harfest after that. And... Mm -hmm. It's just like a really nice, you know, you you wear your witch dagger costume, which mm-hmm. is very cute. Um, you walk to the pickaxe. Well, you can do like little carnival games, which I did. And they're fun little moments. I think I just spun the wheel. Uh, I don't oh, think I did anything else. Okay. So. You, I think there's two. I spun the wheel and then I did like a water yeah. balloon toss. Oh, um, fun. You can throw water balloons in the faces of the council members, which I took personal satisfaction in. wow i missed out yeah i really missed out then <laughs> um and then you go to the pickaxe where b has a request she's gonna pull you into the play yeah. you are going to star and be the centerpiece in the the annual harfest play yeah. so uh, we should note note like it is not normal for the pickaxe the hardware store to host these events or host mm-hmm. this uh, B kind of is trying to get some goodwill within the community, within the the council. Yeah. Uh, so she agreed to to host this year, which she's like, I will never do this again. <laughs> um, so it it was interesting. You get kind of one of those like, here's the tale of this old town, and like mm-hmm. a a legend that we that we like. Yeah. Uh, kind of spooky. Uh, but you get a lot of references to the like the mining history of the Mm -hmm. town and i think this becomes like a really important um motif and backstory and like Mm -hmm. really solidifies like the workers rights and the impact on like on your average worker um that this game really drives home throughout um Mm -hmm. so what are some of the things that like you that you stood out to you about the play um i think One of the biggest things, I think the line that really stuck with me the most was closer to the end of the play, I think, or maybe two thirds of the way through where um, either May's character or someone in the play says all those who die here are cursed to never leave. Again, I think I'm finding myself gravitating towards this idea of stasis versus change versus... um, letting things become obsolete what that what does that mean and so this idea of like everyone who comes to possum springs who has been touched by this town who lives here are kind of cursed in the broader sense of you don't ever really leave (laughs) you're stuck somehow with possum springs forever Uh, that to me was a really compelling line interesting yeah i I will say this play started making me question if this game is going to have supernatural elements or not. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. Because we'll talk about kind of the event immediately preceding this or immediately following this. But generally, it was kind of like a bit of a ghost story in a way. Right. And there's been like references to ghost stories like offhandedly in conversations throughout the game to this point. Mm -hmm. And this was the moment where I was like, oh, are we going to be experiencing something that's like legit supernatural in this game? Mm. Uh, We've been having these spooky dreams and or creepy dreams. And we didn't know like what exactly was going on there. Um, And so, yeah, it was just something that I was curious about. Um, Yeah, I think I had mentally not even gotten to that point because I think B says a line of like, oh, it's now it's like 80%, you know, made up scary story and 20% history. And so in my head, I was like, oh, probably all of this stuff is just made up <laughs> just for the sure. the scare factor mm-hmm. for Harfest. So I did not even think about this as a connection mm-hmm. to 
potentially supernatural stuff that we see later, but that is a really good shout. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Um, as you leave the play, uh, mm -hmm. that night of the heart fest, everything's kind of mm -hmm. sp smoky and dark and it's nighttime. Yeah. Um, and like the very next thing that happened to me was I saw a silhouette grab someone and mm -hmm. drag them away. Yeah. Um, is that what you had next as well? Yeah, you have like a short conversation with your friends, which I think, again, just reinforces a lot of the stuff we've been talking about in terms of how her friends are, May's friends specifically, are moving on in different ways where May is just sort of stuck. Um, Angus wants to go have, or no, Greg wants to go have like a date night with Angus and May's like, can I come? And Greg's like, no, <laughs> you cannot come on our date. Um, B has a dinner with the town council post Harfest and May's also asked, can I come? B straight up says, nope. <laughs> they both walk away. And yeah, May in standing there kind of wondering what to do next witnesses this really horrifying act of someone getting kidnapped. Um, and you are left wondering, I think, like I was, I'm curious because this is where I stopped playing. Um, if this is real, if this is May imagination if this per if it is a real action was it a person was it a ghost because you look at the like i was looking at the pictures and the screenshots i took and i'm like the bottom of their cloak looks like transparent their feet look kind of like hazy is that the fog or is that okay. the actual like the, the body of the ghost i don't know very scary the thing so i will say this i never questioned that it happened mm -hmm. uh what I questioned was your aunt stumbles yes. upon you yes, and just takes you home and like does mm -hmm. not really indicate that this is something serious to be worried about or whatever. Yeah. Well, and sh what's weird too is that she doesn't stumble upon you in the town. You run mm -hmm. to the hill to the far left of town. So you're like out of your way not in the place where everyone would be. You would expect mall cap, cop aunt to be in the middle of Harfest, making sure people in the village are safe. Mm. For some reason, yeah, your your aunt finds you out here in the outskirts. Mm -hmm. Very suspicious. It is very suspicious. And I just, mm -hmm. it, it bothers me, like, because again, like the aunt, I don't, I, I don't know that I feel satisfied <clears throat> at this stage in the game and this like second part with understanding what her motivation is. Like I said, like, I don't feel like we've gotten much about like what happened between these two other than she's a cop and like good enough reason, yeah. but still, I mean, in <laughs> true cop form, not helpful, not helpful, <laughs> so... not doing anything. So yeah. it's just an interesting thing that like, it was actually her, the, the aunt's response that made me feel like this is real. That like, yes, cause she knows something's going on here. And Maybe if she had been like, oh, I'll look at it right away. Yeah. Then I would have been more like, is this really happening? But because she mm -hmm. was like not interested in really exploring mm -hmm. it, that's what made me feel like, no, this something's going on here. Yeah. I also, by the time, like, because when you're chasing after this apparition, you know, at that time, I was like, what is happening? Like, is this going to be a now a horror story? <laughs> or I guess like a ghost horror story. Yep. I think the horrors here are apparent, just not of the normal scary story find kind. Um, but yeah, I do think May's aunt and her reaction made me feel like something is afoot, perhaps with like, I don't know, the bu bureaucracy of the town. Like mm. if May's if May's aunt is in it, like, are the town's council in on this? Because, like, what are who are all of the adults that, like, May's aunt hangs out with is what I started thinking about. And, like, mm. what are they doing? And what are their goals? Because it's, like, I don't think May's aunt is doing anything specifically, but I wonder if she's, like, a lackey or helping maintain something for people who are in positions of Interesting. power. Interesting. Yeah. Know. <laughs> I don't either at, at this point in the game. And I, I just felt like, so again, I walked into this expecting the whole game was going to take place during one <laughs> night in the woods. And yeah. so I was like, Oh, 
here comes the supernatural murder twist. And so at this phase in the game, that is like very much where my head is. And like, we didn't, I haven't really talked about the dreams in this episode much, but like, I also don't know that there's much to talk about because they're so opaque. It's like you, the recurring experience is there are these kind of silhouettes of towns that are pretty much abandoned in a dark forested area and you go follow like the street lights and like eventually find um, almost like apparitions of musicians that are playing music. And then after you've found all four or five of them, you go to this place where there are like little sticks in the background, which I don't, oh, maybe like lampposts. I don't know what they are. And then a giant dream monster appears and it's kind of a different one each time. So I don't really know what to make of them. Like, did you have any theories at this point? I, I don't have specific theories, but I feel like I'm like tugging at threads that I'm seeing. Um, And I would love to know also if anyone listening has theories, ideas, please um, submit them in either through voicemail or by email. But I feel like some threads I'm seeing. Okay. The, the ghosts that you find, like the the apparitions you find in these dreams that play instruments, they are very ghostly. And I think this this idea of revisiting this of ghosts is something that I'm like, I need to think about ghosts more, which I haven't done a ton of yet. Um, what's kind of interesting is they also look a bit old timey to me. And I don't know if I'm reading into that, but I'm no, like, I think so too. are these like spirits so- from the past of the mural of the town? Um, during Harfest, there is a parade that walks by sort of in the foreground and they're all silhouetted, but I think you see some of the instruments represented in that parade in your dreams. I'm not hundred percent sure. Cause I, it was like a flash before I realized what I was seeing. And I'm like, are we seeing these representations also of like what May is experiencing in real life? And how is that blending into these dreamscapes? I don't know. Um, I think when I had I'm curious if the dreams change based on the interactions you have. Cause like the day that I hung out with Lori at the train tracks, there was a really prominent train in my dream. Um, Oh, right. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if you got that as well or if you, I definitely had a train, a train dream. Um, I don't remember when within the storyline I hit that though. Yeah. So I think, I'm going to put a pin in the dream analysis because I feel like I would like to play more of the game before I start to even create theories. Um, Do you but have I feel a like theory there's stuff there. for are we moving in a supernatural direction or not? <laughs> mm, that's a good question. I I feel like probably not. Hmm. I think... This is so cliche, but I'm like, I think the real real horror is going to turn out to be like capitalism. (laughs) Perfect. We love Um, that in this podcast. So I feel like with the way that this game seems to be structured and the way it's going, um, I think May, especially as someone who is working through her own traumas, like doing a lot. Uh, that is also placing her in this more childlike state. I feel like as a player, we're seeing also things and we're absorbing her mentality of things potentially being more fantastical than they maybe really are. Um, And I feel like at the end of the day, kind of going into the line that I think mall cop aunt said, where it's like real life is here and it's really, it's right now. Um, I think it might just be real life. And that is the horror, and I'm. Mm-hmm. That's kind of depressing, but real. <laughs> it is. Uh, if only, if only we could just make a salt circle like the Winchester brothers from Supernatural, and take care of these ghosts, <laughs> and then be free of capitalism. Couldn't you? Could you imagine? I wish. Uh, yeah, I. I think at this phase of the game, I had also kind of maybe given up hope because I wanted there to be supernatural, but I think at this phase, everything felt so grounded and the relationships felt so substantial Mm -hmm. that I was like, I'm not sure how adding at the, at this phase in the game, I was like, I'm not sure how adding a a literal ghostly element. Right. Would 
progress through what is clearly an exploration of these people's lives and relationships. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think at this phase of the game, I was kind of leaning more towards no. Uh, mm. But I will say as we move forward, my perspective shifts on that. So, Dang, what? Yeah. Whoa, foreshadowing here. Um, yeah, I think the last thing I wanted to say, so I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, we got the thing where we say the title of the game in the line of the game. And I wanted to say that line because I think it's also a very good one. And I'm still chewing on it, but I'm sure we'll talk about it by the time we finish. Um, but it's the janitor who shows up during the play, the janitor who annoyed you at the very beginning with his yep. drill. Yep. Apparently B roped him into being in the Harfest play. And one of the lines he says to May is we begin and we end at night in the woods, but that is not the whole of the story. It's so good. I did not even notice that. So <laughs> well done. I thought you were saying that the words weird autumn show up somewhere. No, <laughs> the title of the game. <laughs> well, um, I'm glad. I wish I had noticed because then maybe I wouldn't have been like rushing to get to the the night <laughs> the in night the woods in <laughs> that I thought we were moving towards. So very funny. Oh, yeah. Classic. Yep. Mm. Um, so that is it for this episode. Next week, we're going to be playing through part three, which is called The Long Fall, the long which fall. I'm very curious because I'm like, are they talking about The Long Fall like this season or are we actually going to fall a long distance. Mm. I'm, I'm that's that is my big question for next week. <laughs> you know, I had that same question when I watched the original Power Rangers movie because Kimberly mm. is fighting a bunch of putties and she's like, "Have a nice trip. See you next fall." And she like <laughs> is literally tripping a putty with like a whip or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it's what's interesting is that line sounds like you're talking about the season, but it could also be. That she's tripping him and making them yep. fall. Wow. That is true. Yep. Profound. <laughs> absolutely profound. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us today at Geeks and Grounds, everybody. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. Uh, like Jenny has mentioned, check out geeksandgrounds.com to learn more about our community and how to get engaged with the conversation around this game. I'm sure we're going to start seeing a lot of buzz uh, as we move forward into this part two, part three section. Uh, as you are progressing uh, through the lives and engaging with your family, may we all give our, our cop aunt a hard time. Thanks Again. so much, everyone. <laughs> I was like, I like how last time you were like, let's give cop aunt a hard time. And it's like, no, but for no, real. I mean it. <laughs> give her a hard time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. The Geeks and Grounds podcast is produced and edited by me, Jenny Windham. The logo is designed by Lee Thomas, and the theme today is Weird Autumn from the Night in the Woods, Volume 1, OST. In addition to finding episodes across YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts, you can hang out with us on Instagram and reach out to us with questions, comments, thoughts, or feedback via our website at geeksandgrounds.com or email Jenny at jenny at geeksandgrounds.com. Thanks for listening. <laughs>